Hey everyone, Josh Scott here, Bees in the Weeds. Uh, today I am going to be putting some Vivaldi boards on the hives to prepare them for winter. I'm also going to be pulling the Apigar treatment that I've had on eight of these hives. So I thought I'd take you guys along with me so you can kind of see what a Vivaldi board is, how it's used, and, and the benefits of having the Vivaldi boards on through the winter time. So here we go. Okay, so we have eight hives today, one through eight here, that we're going to be pulling the Apigard treatment off of. It's been two weeks. I'm going to take the shims off the top of those or the supers um, that I'm using just to uh, add the extra space that I did for the Apigard. I'm going to go ahead and pull those off, remove the Apigard treatment, and then I'm going to use what's called a Vivaldi board. I'll show you guys what that is. So this... I assume was designed by someone whose last name is Vivaldi but this is called a Vivaldi board and it's essentially uh, about I don't know half the thickness size of a, of a medium or a shallow uh, super it's got ventilation holes here on each end that's covered on the inside with number eight hardwire cloth so you can see the holes here and then on the bottom of it is like an inner cover and it's shimmed all around here too to provide enough bee space so the top of the frame so the bees can still move over the top of the frames because then you just get tons of propolis and it's it's awful and disgusting and just uh, builds up in here it's a complete mess for the beekeeper and then similar to an inner cover uh, you'll also see a hole here where it's normally like a, you're probably used to seeing the oval hole for the inner covers this is just a circle and then this is what the inside looks like and it's just an empty space here and all this does is uh, it sits on top of the deep and again if you've been watching my channel you know that I only run single deep hive management in my apiary so these will sit on top of uh, the deep the brood chamber for all of my hives and that's it so this will essentially function as the inner cover on top and it provides that open access here the real benefits of this um, aside from that there's also a small little notch on one side on the front of these, which does give the bees an alternate entrance and exit during the winter time. Uh, I only use these during winter. Uh, you can use these all year round. I have a friend named Laura who uses them all year round. I don't find them particularly beneficial to use all year round, but you can. I just think it's a little more hassle to deal with having to take an inner cover off and then take this off every time I do inspection or I wanna get inside of the bees. Um, it's not that big of a deal. It's just personal preference like with everything in beekeeping. But I do use these all through the winter time. So this does provide the bees an alternate uh, entrance and exit. Let's say the very front of the hive, you get a heavy snowfall and you get snow all across the front of the hive and that blocks their entrance. If you get a warm day when the bees wanna leave the hive in the winter time, this allows them a chance to do so in case their main entrance is covered with snow so they can do their cleansing flights or anything else that they need to do. Uh, the other benefit to this is this comes with another piece. It's this little square and it, again covered in number eight hardwire cloth. And this sits over this circle in the middle, just like this. And what this allows you to do is feed your bees through the winter time with uh, pollen patties or uh, you know I've used just pure granulated sugar uh, in the middle of the winter time and the bees can come up here and take this food throughout the entire winter and you don't have to disrupt disrupt or disturb uh, the brood nest or the uh, the cluster because in the winter time bees will form a ball and they will cluster in order to stay warm and you really really want to avoid opening your hives at all costs in the winter time whenever the temperatures are cold um, because you could end up killing your bees, they may break cluster, uh, it's just not a good thing and uh, it could end up killing the brood that they're trying to keep warm. So this is a very uh, unintrusive way of feeding the bees throughout the winter time and I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Uh, I used them all last year, I had four hives, all four successfully overwintered. Um, I was able to pop the inner cover which sits on top of this and I was able to open that and I could see down in here and I could see the bees in a cluster. And um, I was able to just take this off, put some food in there. It's pretty rare unless it's warm out that they would wanna come up here, maybe come at you because again, it's cold. They wanna stay together in a cluster. So you just put your sugar in there or your pollen patty or whatever your feed of, of preference is, not liquid through the, through the winter time, you want something solid. And, uh, and then you just put this back on 
put your inner cover on, outer cover, seal up the hive, you're good to go. So it's really effective, and um, I'm, I'm a big fan. Like I said, Laura turned me on to these, and I've never looked back. So um, I will put a link in the description on where you can buy these. Um, but what I'm going to use them for now, because it's, you know we're first week of September here, maybe second week of September, and um, it's not quite time to completely overwinter your bees yet, but the beekeeping calendar starts in August. So everything that we do right now as beekeepers uh, really is going to determine the success uh, of your bees making it through the winter and how healthy and good those bees come out of the winter and take off in the spring uh, during the flow. So it's everything we're doing right now is preparation purposes. So the mite treatments that I have on all these hives right now, that's in preparation. Once I get all these Vivaldi boards on the hives, I'm gonna hit every single one of these hives with another round of OA vapor. It's extremely important to get those mite loads down as low as you can uh, going into the winter time. Cause right now the bees are making, the, the queen is making fat bees, what's called fat bees. And those are bees that are capable of living throughout the winter time, you know, for several months. I think the typical lifespan of a worker bee, a female worker bee, don't quote me, but it's like, I think it's anywhere from like 40 to 60 days, somewhere around there, uh, month, maybe month and a half, roughly. Um, and so these bees are capable of living a lot longer because in the winter time, the uh, population of the colony really goes down because the more bees that you have in the colony, the more bees that you have to feed, right? And so, you know, they're storing everything for the winter right now, storing feed, uh, pollen, um, you know, any, any type of uh, nectar, honey that they're storing in that they're gonna be consuming throughout the winter time. So the less amount of bees, the less you have to feed. So these are really effective though, to be able to, to supply some supplemental feed. If you come out here in the middle of January or December and you know, you, you do like a, a heft on the hive just to see and it's really light, you can go ahead and supplemental feed and add some feed to these. And I think they're really good. What I'm gonna use them for right now is I, I don't use this yes yet. I wait till the winter time to put this in. But what I do use is these feeders, and y'all have seen these before. Uh, I can put a link in the description too. I get them off Amazon. They come in two packs. And I think technically they're called hummingbird feeders, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, but, um, you know, they're, they're plastic here. They have an opening on the bottom. They've got this little rigid uh, lip right here. And they've got this little inside plastic dome that goes on the inside here. And you line it up with these little plastic tabs so the bees can't get in here. And then it's got this outer cover here and you put your sugar syrup in here. And then the bees can come up through this hole in the inner cover and they can get the sugar syrup inside here, but they can't actually get to the area that has the sugar syrup in it. And let me, let me come in a little closer. You can kind of see this a little better. So you can see it has an opening in here and this has ridges. So the bees actually will come up in here, come down here, stay inside this dome and get the sugar syrup. There's a little bit of a gap right here where the sugar syrup can get in here all the way to the top and the bees will drink that all the way down. And then all you have to do is come back, take this off, refill with your bucket sugar syrup back up here and you don't have to disrupt the bees whatsoever. It's, it's pretty ingenious, it's really slick. Um, I'm a big fan. I've used them for two years now, I think. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put these on the Vivaldi board right over that hole like this and you know this time of year you know the hives if they're light it's time to feed and uh, you can feed one to one it gets starts getting you know colder temperatures out you want to feed a heavier syrup like a two to one but you really want to make sure the bees have enough food going into the winter time and you know the height of this fits perfectly inside the Vivaldi board it just seems like a match made in heaven in my opinion so each one of the hives is going to get a Vivaldi board, they're going to get a feeder, and then I'm going to start feeding a boatload of sugar syrup uh, to, to all these girls and all these hives out here. So that's what we're going to do today. So I figured I'd take you along with me so you can kind of see uh, what it looks like, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we'll go ahead and get suited up here. Not too bad out today. I don't know, it's like 70s out here, I think which isn't terrible. It's probably gone out on me while I stood here talking.
I was checking the uh, IPM boards on a few of the hives the other day, and um, you know, there's uh, certainly uh, a handful of, uh, or I would say more than a handful, uh, quite a few Varroa mites on the IPM board, and there were some that are alive too, so uh, it's another reason I personally am a fan of uh, screen bottom boards, because those mites are alive, and if they fall off, you know, they would normally fall through that screen and uh, down to the ground, and uh, that uh, prevents them from getting back up into the hive, whereas if you had a uh, solid bottom board, those that, that mite could crawl its way all the way back up into the hive. Um, but, you know, just like with anything, there's pros and cons to, to each method with beekeeping. I just, I prefer screen bottom boards. There's plenty of beekeepers that prefer solid bottom boards. There we go. Use whatever works best for you. And I have my entrances, you probably noticed, well, I don't know if you can see it from there, but I have my entrances closed down this time of year pretty far to prevent any sort of robbing anything else that may be going on. Um, it's just kind of a good idea. Stuck sometimes, dreadful pass. Try not to disturb the bees, but it's almost impossible. There we go. All right. Like I was telling you earlier with these, in the last video with these shims, generally this time of year, they're not looking to build any comb, so there sh it shouldn't be too bad here with, uh, in terms of any brace comb or anything else that they built up inside here. We're gonna find out. Oh, high beetle, uh, darn, almost got 10 points. Now, because I don't have any queen excluders on here, Every time you take the uh, inner cover off, do yourself a favor and look for your queen. All right. These are actually pretty calm right now. First thing I'll do is take the shim off. that anymore and here's our happy guard tray so they carried most of it out that's pretty good after a while I'm told you know the bees grow accustomed to the thymol and they're not as uh, geared up to uh, take it out of the hive and that's really when it's effective is when they carry it out of the hive and spread it amongst themselves uh, but that's pretty good I'd say that's you know two-thirds of the tray removed so we'll set that aside and then really I just want to do like a quick inspection I don't want to disturb them too much I just want to get maybe a frame in the middle here see how they're doing check their food stores which I'm sure are low which is why we need to get some feed on these hives. So all I'm gonna do is check a frame or two in the middle here. I don't really need to find the queen, I just need to find evidence of her is what I'm doing. Nice brood pattern here. A little bit of hygienic behavior. 
but I see eggs and there's my queen right here I'll show you guys she's on this frame just got lucky and happened to find her so there's that beautiful 2022 queen right there these bees are super calm and chill on the hive I I really like this colony she's a good queen I really like their uh, their their temperament you can, I don't know if you can see the larvae and the eggs inside the cells there, but she's actively looking for a place to lay right now. But see how the bees are real calm and chill on the comb? That's what I look for in my apiary. I don't like the frantic bees, the ones that are pissy and try to bump you and everything else. So just real calm, definitely preferred. I see a lot of bee bread. Let me show you, I don't know if you saw that. See on the outer edge there, see that's all pollen and bee bread right there. Really good nutrition. That's the kind of stuff you wanna see. I really would like to see more honey and nectar at the top here around the outer edges. So again, this colony needs fed, which is fine. They're gonna get fed. This colony has about five, six seams of bees in it. Really, really calm. This colony and this colony, generally, I don't even need to wear gloves. I mean, I could probably just get away with a veil. Um, and I do that a lot of times with these two. This time of the year though, usually if bees, you know, have their honey, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty protective more than normal. This hive's real pissy. Um, I don't know. I still don't know what I'm gonna do about that one. Right now, I'm just gonna leave them alone, obviously. But uh, next spring, I may requeen them, we'll see. I've not found that queen yet. This is one I tried to put a courthouse queen in and didn't take. This colony looks like it's doing real well. So now all we're gonna do is put that Vivaldi board on. And again, you wanna make sure that little, that little notch towards the front just like so and oh forgot to mention the reason that I painted these a flat black is so that the Sun hits them in the winter time and adds warmth because the other thing that you want to do they, I'll, I'll do a video on later when it's time to actually uh, overwinter these bees I have like reflect reflective foil material that I put inside the inner cover here. And what that does is it helps radiate the heat back into the hive. And the other thing that I do is I have a burlap sack and remember that uh, square that goes over the hole. Well, the other thing you do is you take burlap and you stuff it all around inside the empty space here. And so bees are just like humans, they exhale and it has moisture in their breath. And so in the winter time, it's not really the cold that usually kills bees, it's the moisture in the hive will evaporate from when they exhale. It'll uh, accumulate at the top of the inner cover here on a normal beehive. It accumulate on the top here and freeze. Well, then if you get a warm winter day, that thaws out and that ice cold water drips on the bees and that's what kills them. So you wanna get the, the moisture out of the hive. And so what this does is again, provides a way to feed your bees through the winter time but they're, everything that they exhale in their breath will come up through the number eight hardwire cloth here and it will get absorbed inside that burlap and that burlap will dissipate the moisture and that moisture can escape through these holes right here on the front and on the back. It's, it's, really, it's really pretty slick. Um, it's a great invention. So now I'm gonna do is put one of these feeders on the hive. And then when I'm done with all the hives, I will go mix up a bunch of sugar syrup and we'll get these girls fed. But you can see now how I can get in here and feed and I'm not disrupting the hive anymore, right? So it's, uh, it's really an advantage 
and you just put your inner cover back on. And that hardwire cloth also keeps out any sort of wax moss or anything else that wants to get in through this entrance or the rear holes here. One down and seven to go. So y'all remember how I said, oh, they won't build any brace comb. <laughs> Look at the comb that they built here and here. Good grief, what a mess. That's okay, all I can do is I, I can shake the bees off. I really just wanna make sure the queen's not on there or make sure I at least get her back in the hive. Um, But this hive, the population is still pretty high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake these bees off back into the hive and we'll scrape this, uh, this comb off. This is the first one I've come across. I've done four already and this is the first one that started building comb in that space. All right. Well, I've certainly seen worse. Again, the concern is if the queen's up in here. I'm just gonna try to, I'm just gonna apply some light smoke here, see if I see any eggs. Nah, that's all empty. I didn't think she'd be up in here, but gosh, you never know. Nah, I think we can shake these bees off for the most part. Get them back down in there and scrape that comb off. I'm going to go ahead and remove the treatment. Man, this hive is just packed. gentle little shake here. Try not to smack them. See the brace comb that they put up? So we'll just put this in the uh, solar melter. Get a little bit of beeswax out of it. it's safe to say this queen's doing pretty well holy cow definitely the highest population of any hive i've seen so far um, i hope they don't swarm always a possibility oh shoot there were some eggs in here oh well i don't think they're hurting for space or bees actually they are hurting for space a little bit that's why they built this but again, the population really should be coming down this time of year, so.
seems like every time I'm out here, they're mowing. So, the simple fact that I saw eggs, I really don't need to look any further in here. I can lift on this hide just to see, kind of maybe get a gauge of how much food they have. Um, yeah, it's light. They're gonna get fed. But I've already seen evidence of the queen now, so I'm done. The other hives, the first two hives there, um, hive four and three, I found the queen. Hive one and two, I did not find the queen, but I found fresh eggs and larvae and all signs of life, so. This time of year, I try, I try not to disrupt them as much as I can, you know. I don't really see a need to do a uh, complete hive inspection. I'm really just concerned right now. Do I have a laying queen? Does she appear to be healthy? Do I see all stages of life? If I look at one or two frames, do I see any obvious signs of disease? The answer is no. Uh, let's get our mite loads down and uh, start to feed. Get them ready for winter. That's my primary concerns right now. Uh, so I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna disrupt this hive. I'm not even gonna open them up. I mean, whole frames I already opened them up, obviously. But I am gonna scrape this. Uh, they always put a little propolis on the bottom of the happy guard there. It seems. Just, you know, do yourself a favor and. Uh, Keep propolis to a manageable level. Where you have the opportunity to scrape it, I recommend you scrape it. All right, let me go get another revolving board. overwinters and comes out gangbusters like that in the spring I get get a nice honey crop I also hope they don't swarm on me soon now some of the other beekeepers would be like well Josh this would be the time that you would put on your second heat yeah I hear you uh, but no I don't want to so uh, I don't personally find the uh, pros outweigh the cons with two deeps. I had my first year of beekeeping, I ran double deeps. I didn't like it. Too much to go through. If I'm trying to find the queen quickly for whatever reason, if I need to supersede her, if I'm wanting to do a split, it just doubles my work. And I don't have a lot of time. I've already been out here for over an hour and that's a long time for me to spend in the apiary at this point in my life. Now, maybe when I'm 60, 70 and retired, and I've got all day to do nothing, sure, no problem. Maybe I'll revisit it. But it's it's just, uh, it's much easier for me to manage single deeps right now in my life than double deeps. And I understand that means that my hives are gonna swarm far more often. And I've, I've accepted that, I'm okay with that. And I'm dealing with it, and it's fine. I've, I caught four or five swarms, my own swarms this year. Um, and that's why I went from four to, four to 10, so. Uh, you know, and if I catch swarms next year, I may sell them as nukes, you know, who knows? So, uh, again, every beekeeper puts the disclaimer out, do whatever works best for you. And this is what works best for me right now. Okay. These girls are ready to get some heat on. That went pretty well, except I don't know where I put my... falls on the ground and it's just the counter that tells me what hive this is hive number five I know I set it up here it must have fallen there it is I guess you know 
everyone has their own methods. I know some beekeepers that write on top of theirs. I use these little tokens, like little counters, to keep track of what hive number I'm working on. And then I have an app called B Plus that I, I write notes in for each hive after I'm done inspecting it. So I can go back and review those, be like, okay, uh, what was happening in this hive? You know, uh, what year is the queen? Um, any signs of disease? Uh, how much honey did I pull off of them? Um, you know, when's the last time I fed them? When's the last time I did mite treatments? All that stuff. It just, you know, you get enough hives in your apiary, unless you have an exceptional uh, photographic memory. I think you need some sort of system to keep track of uh, what's going on with each hive. All right, number five down. We'll keep going. I just thought. I just thought it was interesting and y'all might want to see this brace comb. Um, y'all might be able to see the eggs in it. I don't know. It's usually really hard to tell on camera. Let me see if I can find. Here we go. Y'all see if you can see the teeny tiny little eggs in the bottom of that cell. It looks like a little grain of rice. I don't know if it's focusing well enough for you to see those in the bottom of the cells. You, like you can see them right there. Those are eggs. And that's exactly what you want to look for. One single egg, bottom middle of the cell, pointing up. That's a good sign of a good queen. All right, thanks for watching. Well, we managed to get all 10 Vivaldi boards on all the hives. Uh, took me a while. <laughs> I went ahead and inspected every hive as well just to check on their food stores and see what's going on, see if good signs of the queen in there. I didn't find the queen in every hive, of course, but I found signs or of a good queen or found the queen in every single hive. So the Vivaldi boards are the, the black, uh, shallow looking things on top there. So I've got them on all 10 hives now. So they are somewhat prepared for the winter time. So I'll keep those on until uh, all throughout the winter. So I've got feeders on all the hives now. So what I plan to do is uh, feed pretty heavily one-to-one -one, uh, sugar syrup. There's one or two hives that had a, a decent amount in it, but the vast majority of these hives are extremely light. Um, you know, I know, you know, we're either in a flow now or we're getting ready to go into a fall flow, but I really want to make sure that, you know, each of these hives has anywhere from 30 plus pounds of food in it, whether that's honey, sugar syrup, whatnot. Uh, you know, I was watching a video from Bob Benny, and uh, he made a, a strong argument um, on uh, the fact that it's actually more beneficial for bees to overwinter with sugar syrup than it is honey. Uh, something along the lines of uh, the impurities that are, that are in honey, the bees have to be able to get out and use the bathroom more often than straight sugar syrup. And uh, there's other benefits as well. Uh, I can't remember everything off the top of my head, but I encourage you all to go check out that video if you're interested. Um, Bob Benny runs a commercial operation down in the Georgia area, I believe. So uh, I am, I'm pooped, I'm tired. I, I had plans to treat each hive with oxalic acid today, but I think I'm gonna uh, put that off for another day. And uh, I'm gonna go back to the house and start whipping up some uh, some sugar syrup and get it on these hives. Um, but uh, pretty successful day. Uh, I appreciate y'all for uh, checking in and thanks for watching.